What is going on everybody and welcome to another gameplay video. It is great to be here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Before we jump in, a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, yesterday uh, we did not have any gameplay videos. I do apologize. Unfortunately, it was just a busy day. Had some meetings I had to take care of and some other things for work, uh, which took precedence. So unfortunately, I was not able to get any gameplay up. But today we've got some and I'm excited for it. Also, if you did not watch our Strixhaven giveaway winner announcement, please do. Very, very happy to say that Pixie Kitten Plays, who uh, is a fellow content creator, she does a fantastic job. Please go check her out. Uh, she does a lot of really interesting stuff, including skits, uh, gameplay, streams. Uh, she's also a cosplayer. She does a lot of really great stuff. Really happy to say we, we get to give it away to her. Uh, that's a really special thing. So congratulations. And thank you, of course, to everybody who did enter. Do not worry if you didn't win this time. We have got plenty of other opportunities. We try and do a giveaway at least once a month, uh, but we, we certainly try and do our part to give back to the community. And so that is our way of doing it. But without further ado, let's jump into today's deck. This is Abzan Control. I looked at a number of lists uh, for this particular kind of build, uh, and I played around with it a little bit. A lot of this is to test out some of the new cards from uh, from Strixhaven. So Fracture is one of the new removal spells, hits artifacts, enchantments, and planeswalkers. Uh, the good thing about this is it most often finds a target. Uh, however, it's not always the best thing to have in the opening hand because a lot of times uh, you'll find yourself up against maybe a mono red deck, which is great against Embercleave, for instance, but in the early turns of the game, it's mostly a dead card. Uh, against Control, it's also really good to hit uh, some of the larger Planeswalkers if they go that route, but uh, again, that's usually not until later in the game. Uh, and so it is nice to have, but we do only have it as a two of here uh, to avoid maybe over overstating how good this card is. Uh, Vanishing Verse is another nice uh, removal spell, in my opinion. Two mana, instant exile target, monocolored permanent. Uh, that can be anything that is monocolored. That is massive. That hits planeswalkers, uh, enchantments, creatures, whatever you need. This has it, uh, which is really, really good. So I'm excited to try Vanishing Verse out a little bit. In the two drop slot, we also have, of course, Heartless Act and Maze Mind Tome. Uh, the Tome is just nice card advantage overall, uh, and then of course Heartless Act be being just a decent removal spell. Uh, in that same realm, we have Mythos of Nethroi just being able to hit a non-land permanent. Again, the name of the game for this one is Flexibility, and we've got quite a bit of that with this deck, so I, I like that a lot. Uh, another one that I haven't been super impressed with, but does provide some utility in certain ways, uh, is Baleful Mastery. This is really, really good against things like Anax. Uh, if, if they try and drop that out, uh, you exile it, and then essentially they don't get the tokens in response. So a very nice card for that, but most often you're not gonna wanna pay that too. Uh, you're gonna wanna pay the full four just so they can't draw a card. Uh, and so I find that a bit tricky. Extinction Event, obviously just a really solid card. A full four of these in here uh, because we are kind of light on win cons. So I wanted to make sure that we could sweep as much as we need to. Binding of the Old Gods, again, full four. This is just a good catch-all flexible uh, way to kind of get rid of whatever is on the field. Pelucranos Unchained, a great way to deal with creatures. We've got two of them in here. Don't want too many, of course, but just a really nice card. Uh, as an additional sweeper and some graveyard hate, we do have Shadow's Verdict. Now, this is an all-star against any Luris deck. Obviously, it takes care of everything on their field and every creature in their graveyard, uh, which is really, really crucial because, again, that just shuts down the Luris decks. A good Shadow's Verdict in that, in that matchup, and you've got it. Uh, as far as win cons go, we do have Professor Onyx as a one of. Excited to try uh, Lily out here. We have, of course, got Vorinclex, just an absolute powerhouse card. Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, again, one of the tried and true planeswalkers of these builds. And then two Amaria's Call. Uh, not only works as a land, of course, but then can spit out some angels. And then we've got a good bit of uh, tech in the lands. Obviously, a couple scry lands. Castle Lockflame being able to draw us some cards, and then the Triumphs to be able to cycle. Oh, and of course, Castle Ardenvale to spit out some tokens. So regardless, this deck looks fun. I have played it a little bit uh, and played around with the initial list, which I did. Um, I pulled from Aetherhub, and I wish I could remember who initially posted it, but we have changed it around a little bit since then. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I like to think we made some good changes. Adding in extra extinction events, I think, was a really good call. 
uh, because there are a number of times where you just get outpaced. This is a removal heavy deck, no doubt about it though. So we have got uh, answers upon answers, we will say. Uh, I'm gonna lead on the temple here. This just gives us uh, a little bit of utility. And I think I actually keep the land. We've got plenty of removal here. Uh, turn two, we get to leave up Vanishing Verse uh, or Heartless Act, which is quite nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and reveal the swamp here. Uh, and most likely, turn three, it's just going to be the same. We're going to be dropping this in Dotha Trium uh, and, and just seeing what happens. Uh, guys, I hope you are having a fantastic week. Uh, this has been a very, very busy time, uh, but it's really great to get back into some gameplay. I do apologize because I know we were not able to stream much this week at all so far, um, but we are going to be doing our card hunt, so please, please tune into our Twitch stream link down below on Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to be opening up some Strixhaven, hopefully finding Professor Onyx, and then giving it away if we do, so it's going to be a really fun time. I'm stoked for it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, four base. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So just big ramp. Uh, this is a little scary. Um, we get one of the lands. That's interesting. Um, little scary. We'll see what happens here, but we're just drawing all the lands. Uh, and I mean, we've, we're set up. We are very well set up regardless of what they end up playing. Um, little worried about like a Genesis ultimatum. Um, here, I'm just going to go ahead and Heartless Act here. Let's just get this out of here while they only have the, the one mana available. Um, and then we actually just get to sweep, um, to, to get rid of all these. So, not really upset by that at all. We've got three Shadows Verdicts, so I don't feel bad about getting rid of one of them. Uh, and here we are. Uh, if they get to do it again, uh... It's kind of okay. We've got Binding of the Old Gods plus the Shadows Verdict, so I don't really feel bad about uh, what we've got here. Uh, Vanishing Verse obviously going to play a decent role here. I think actually, though, what we do is Binding. Um, this gets us an extra card out of our deck next turn, which is just good for deck thinning. Um, I am going to play out the Andatha Trium. Want to have as many lands as I can, just so I can double up on some stuff here. Uh, and crucially, that allows us to do quite a bit of that. So, uh, that being said, I am going to pull the forest out. Just allows us uh, to essentially be able to uh, still pull the Endotha Trium, and then if we want, we can cycle it away. We're not really hurting for fixing in any way, so I'm not, uh, not upset by anything here. Um, okay. And we're just drawing every land we can. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad thing, um, but it's also not really a great thing. I'm actually just going to pass here. Um, I don't particularly want to burn any of this on the Tangled Florahedron. If we need to, we can Vanishing Verse at instant speed, so not not upset or, or worried about that. Uh, I have to imagine they have like Genesis Ultimatum or something along that uh, line to, to try and finish the game here, so I'm just going to take the one. Kind of baiting them a little bit into to playing some more stuff, but so far, like I said, we are light, light, light on uh, on the game ending kind of cards. So I think uh, that might be one criticism I have of the build so far, which is to say that we might just need to swap a couple of things out here for some some different options. We will say and there is another vanishing verse. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just binding here. Um, a little bit riskier because obviously that does leave open the uh, whatever they had. Uh, this thing. Pylath. Phylath. That one. Uh, as an option for us to have to deal with later on, but we'll see. Uh, we will see. Okay. And we have Extinction Event. We have every sweeper, I think, in our deck, so... <laughs> Uh, in one hand, on one hand, that's actually very good for us, just because it does give us another answer to the Phylath. On the other hand, we really didn't need another answer. <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of hoping to draw something good here. Um, Castle Lockthwain, I mean, it's a card, but it's not really what we want. Uh, I don't really feel the need to take seven damage for a card. Uh, that just seems wrong to me. <laughs> so 
I'm gonna go ahead and burn some spells in my hand, the idea being that that Castle Lockthwain could open up for us as an option. Um, we also just have redundancies upon redundancies here, so... Uh, Maze by Tomb, not bad, actually, giving us some card draw, uh, which is, I think, definitely needed, but again, we are just hitting... hitting all the stuff. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I mean, apparently the opponent doesn't have a ton going for them in either. Otherwise, I think they would have played it out by now. They have a million mana. Uh, they know we're not countering anytime soon, so... I... Okay. Sure. Uh, this is actually great because, again, Extinction Event just kind of wipes this whole thing out. Uh, so... It's not really a problem. Let's go ahead and scry first. Let's see what we've got on top. I'm actually going to put that on the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and draw here just to see what we get. And it's a land. No surprise. We're going to hit for even. Uh, get rid of all of that. <laughs> and we're back. I mean, you can't... You, you can see how the uh, the deck lasts a long time, but the question isn't can it last a long time, the question is can we actually win the game? Uh, and as it stands now, we're just drawing and spinning wheels. Uh, that has to mean all of our good stuff is in the second half of our deck, so <laughs> let's hope we can find it. Uh, let's go ahead, let's draw another card. We did get another Tome, which isn't bad, uh, it just allows us to draw some more cards. There's an answer to basically anything. Let's draw another card. <laughs> there is the Amiria's Call. Now this actually does give us a potential win con. My guess is that they have a uh, the the sweeper for that hits for four. Um, and maybe they don't. Maybe they're just gonna remove one at a time here. Uh, kind of interesting. So this is a frostbite list. I guess that should have been apparent given the fact that they are running a lot of snowlands, but. Frostbite is really not great against our deck, um, and they can burn them now all they want for the fact that we've got Professor Onyx and some other really nice stuff in the back uh, to hopefully uh, finish this off, so we'll see. Um, I do feel very well set up now. That Mythos gives us another option, again, if they do have another Phylath. Just provides us with a little extra uh, insurance, which we did not need at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is interesting. I know what they're trying to do. I mean, obviously, they're just trying to Phylath and get just tons of value, which I appreciate. I think that's a very cool deck idea. Um, however, I think we are well positioned against that list, which is great. Uh, I am going to get rid of the Fracture here. We It's a redundancy, um, and it's also not hitting anything on their side. So let's just go ahead and take the easy discard. There's Pelucranos. Now that is a game finisher. So let's do some things first here. Let's just go ahead and attack in. Uh, obviously, the, the first thing we need to do, get him down a little bit further. Let's go ahead and draw an extra card as well since we've got a million mana. Oh, and here we go. This is actually quite good. Now, let's go ahead, throw out some tokens. We'll throw out the Pelucranos as well. Um... And now we have got a very scary board. Um, that went from 0 to 100 very quickly. <laughs> um, okay, they're going to Frostbite the Garrick. Makes sense. If they get another Frostbite, that's very good. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, you got it. Very solid. Um, one thing I wish this deck had was a little bit more uh, redundancies. Part of me wants to swap out a couple of things for maybe a Blood in the Snow or something along those lines to be able to pull some stuff back. Um, but again, just my view. Uh, we'll see how this shakes out. Um, part of me wants to actively remove this, and the other part of me wants to wait and see what they do. Um, I think I will just wait... Uh, and what do we discard? I think it's just Fracture. Or actually, maybe it's Vanishing Verse. Uh, the, the simple fact that their whole game plan seems to revolve around... Well, there we go. That might have been a mistake, but that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Goldspan Dragon here. 
We've got removal for days, so I am not worried about <laughs> anything coming our way. And look, more removal. Okay, so uh, we do have some life to play with if we wanted, uh, but I don't think we need to. I honestly think the move will be to remove our own creature uh, and then play it back. Um, but I also just don't think, like, I'm okay playing the slow game. Okay, that helps too. Uh, this gives us another way to stack a little extra damage here. I want them to remove the creature if they need to, not us remove the creature. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to castle Ardenvale for as much as I can uh, and, and hopefully finish th this game off in the next couple turns here. Uh, but man, what a, what a slow game. Uh, it's fine. We expected it. It's fine. That's what this deck does. We are control. We take a long time. Uh, but the first 15, 16 minutes of this video <laughs> is one single game. I love it. Uh, okay. Um, with that in mind, we're going to discard this Fracture. Shadow's Verdict could be a good one as well, uh, but it really doesn't matter to me. Um, they bought themselves a turn, uh, which is fine, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, we get to play this out now for a 12-12. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Six. Go ahead and do that. We're going to drop a giant Pelucranos. Uh, and you know what? For insurance, we'll we'll throw out a little 1-1. One, one. Obviously, I'm playing a little bit hastier than I normally would. Obviously, the correct play would be to wait on Castle Ardenvale, things like that. I don't think it really matters. Um... <laughs> Interesting. So part of me actually just wants to destroy my own permanent and it kills the Brazen Borrower. Uh, I think I will. Doesn't really matter how I pay for this. <clears throat> All this does is make sure that that Brazen Borrower just gets fizzled, uh, which means they don't get it as a threat. Uh, so that's, that's why we do that. Since we have got a million mana and a million removal spells, I don't feel too upset about doing that. Valakut's Awakening? Sure. Uh, they get to draw a lot, um, which is quite good. Um, we'll see how many cards they want to put back. All but three, or all but one, excuse me. Um, okay. I mean, we, we're sitting pretty comfortably, I think, here. <laughs> I'm not really worried about... Uh, I'm trying to think what they could have, and they can keep sweeping and try and beat us that way. But the reality is they have less cards in their deck than we do, and we're sitting very well at 26. Um, okay. I'm just going to kill it. I'm just going to kill it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we do just get to sweep here also. Um, I mean... <laughs> Oh, there's the Amaria's Call as well. Uh, let's go ahead and Shadow's Verdict. Gets rid of all these. That's why I was kind of holding on to them. <clears throat> let's go ahead and play the Amaria's Call. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just go ahead and do this. Um, the reason being, if they do have the, the Sweeper, Storm's Wrath, I could never remember the name of that card. Uh, then that doesn't hit Pelucranos while it does hit the Angels, so... I have to think that eventually we just win here. <laughs> okay, sure. You got me. It just doesn't matter. Like, not even a little. Um, great. That's also cool. We can kill that. <laughs> it just doesn't matter what they have. Um, I mean, it's a great place to be when there's the inevitability factor, right? Also cool, but still doesn't matter. Um, so what can we do? We can Extinction Event for Odd, which hits both of these. And then we just Binding of the Old Gods, I think. Excuse me, it also hits that. Kind of forgot that it did that. Uh, holy crap, what a long game. That was almost... That was ridiculous. We did it. We did it. We got the win. It took us forever, but it's fine. All right, let's jump into game two. We'll probably only get to three games. I want to make sure we at least get three games, but that's probably going to be it. Uh, realistically, <laughs> with this amount of removal, 
Um, we're pretty well set up to win the game. It just is going to take a long time. What I will say about this list, and you saw it in action there, because we are very light on the game ending kinds of cards, uh, you'd have to be a little bit careful. Thankfully, Pelucranos gives that good reoccurring threat, and Castle Ardenvale gives you that inevitability, which is going to eventually be able to win the game, but it does take quite a while. There is some consideration to swap that a little bit, maybe take out a couple of our sweepers and push for a little bit more in the way of uh, game ending stuff. But I kind of don't know if I like that. I like the fact that we have the inevitability. This hand's terrible, but we're going to try it. That way, if we lose, it's quick. <laughs> um, fracture, sure. We're going to play the swamp first. Obviously, if we get a white source, that opens up two options now for us. Uh, there's the snarl, or the, yeah, the snarl. Go ahead and do this. Um, not great for us, but it does have Baleful Mastery as an option if we decide to go this route. Uh, hmm. I am debating. I'm really debating on that one. Um, I think I'm gonna take a hit. And I'm going to wait and potentially just exile it without giving them a card draw. Really don't want them to have a card draw here. Ooh, okay, this is even potentially better. Um, whew, okay, we've got some good options here, so I'm actually okay with this. Um, I think we do give them the card draw in this case. Let's not take too much or let them draw extra cards on this. This is essentially a freebie. Um, and then we can actually get rid of Toski here as well. Uh, with the extinction event. Um, still needing that white source. <laughs> Let's make sure we hit this for even. Uh, yep. If we do get that white source, Vanishing Verse takes this game out of the picture. I mean, they just have very little they could do. We've got a way to kill it. Not worried. Uh, there's the Trium. That's actually super helpful. Actively going to go ahead and get rid of this while they don't have any responses. Not that I think they could have a lot, to be honest, but Snakeskin Veil is a card. You got to respect it. So Fracture gets to take this out, uh, which is just a nice little value engine for them. So I'm OK with that as well. <laughs> um, I am going to actively Fracture it. And now we have Mythos up. I mean, like I said, we have everything we need to deal with what they're going to do. Um, I, there's very little I think they could do. We've still got the Vanishing Verse. If they happen to draw another uh, Toski or anything like that, we've got a way to deal with it. That's just not very good. Against a handful of removal. Um, let me be clear in saying it is a... This deck is actually really cool. It's Mono Green Stompy, which is one of the lists that I actually really want to play uh, very soon. But um, I think I think it just dies a lot, <laughs> so it's kind of fine. Uh, I think we wait and Shadow's Verdict to this. Uh, to be able to leave up the Instant Speed Vanishing Verse just seems better. Uh, this also just gets rid of, uh, what's it called? The Stone Coil Serpent from the Graveyard. And there is how we win, hopefully. Um, this obviously provides us with some engine, so now, again, we still get to leave up the Vanishing Verse to hopefully deal with whatever they have, but we'll be fine. Um, I'm not really worried about the, the Swarm Shambler, to be brutally honest. But... When you can, go ahead and remove it. Just takes that off of the table as an option. And now we've got enough blockage here that uh, I'm not terribly worried about how this goes. That gives us a counter. <laughs> um, I'm going to go this route. I'm also going to draw a card. There's the Trium. Um, I think we actually just cycle that Trium away. Uh, they've got a 1-1, one, one, so really not worried at this point. <laughs> uh, Mythos is great. Again, just more insur insurance against whatever they might have. Oh, hello, Vorinclex. How are you today? <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and get some damage in here. <laughs> 
Uh, let's not forget also, of course, we do need to plus, or, or excuse me, zero the Garrick. Um, let's do that. And now we should win. And just to be mean, yeah, I was just going to mythos that just to be mean, but we really didn't need to. That is two victories for Abzan Control. Man, what a lovely, uh, what a lovely deck. Okay, one more game, guys. I think we're going to stick with the three because this is going to go pretty long, if I had to guess. We're already sitting at roughly 25 minutes. Let's see how it goes. I like this deck quite a bit, guys. Um, I'm all for a good control deck. Uh, Abzan traditionally is a little bit more in the, not Jund category, but one that's more of a mid-range kind of all-around list. This focuses very, very heavily on that removal aspect, which gives us a little bit more longevity uh, with the inevitability, which I like. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this hand is actually pretty good. Like we've, we've got um, the turn two tome, We've also got the Extinction Event on 4 or Pelucranos, depending on what the opponent is playing. So I feel pretty strongly that we can easily keep. I am going to lead on the Endotha Trium. Okay. Uh, thankfully, again, the great thing about this list, we have answers for any kind of permanent. Uh, and I think that that just speaks for itself. It just, it solves all the problems. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and share some info. Obviously going to take a little bit of a hit here, but it's fine. And we will go ahead and scry at the end of their turn, just depending on what they might have. I uh, want to make sure that we've got everything taken care of. Very important for us. That's beautiful, by the way, to take care of this Ozolith before it gets out of hand. Um, thankfully, we've got quite a number of ways to do that. Um... It is important to note whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, not dies, uh, because the trick here is that um, if we exile it with Extinction Event, normally that would solve quite a number of problems. In this case, it does not. So we do have to be very careful about that. Um, I'm actually going to put that on the bottom. We've got plenty of lands in the list. I'm not worried about hitting the right ones. Uh, let's throw this out. Um, and I think we just leave this up, right? And then next turn we get to binding. Uh, probably going to take a pretty decent hit here, but um, should be okay. We do want to make sure we do this after the initial attack is declared. That way the Ozolith doesn't actually trigger. Uh, so it will get the counters, but it doesn't then put them back onto anything else. And then we actually just get to destroy it with binding. So depending on what they do here, we might be in really good shape. Little worried being in Quandrix uh, that they could have counters. They may not, though. I, I'm not sure. Emergent Sequence is a very interesting card. I did not expect that. Uh, okay. Very cool. Not a totally free spell, but a nice little way to get an extra creature out. Um... And there is Thassa. Very cool. Um, again, all really cool. Uh, but we've got ways to kind of deal with it. Um, I will go ahead and exile this. Crucially, this is going to save us it, essentially six damage. Um, because we would take the damage this turn, and then we'd also most likely be taking it next turn. And I don't particularly want to do that. Um... Let's go ahead and scry. I'm going to put that on the bottom. I think at this point we are in the camp of removal is key. This puts all the counters basically on the Ozolith, which is terrible for them because we just get to wreck the Ozolith here. Um, which means they are left with a 1-4. That might have been about the worst play they could have done, honestly. Um, I would have just bounced the corridor monitor knowing that we are in green-black. Binding of the Old Gods, man, you gotta respect the card. Respect the card. Very, very important. We do get to scry again here, which is nice. Uh, there's the Oracle. Fully expected that, but we do get to exile, uh, crucially, everything <laughs> uh, next turn. So I'm not particularly worried at this point. Um, and the Visionary. Okay, very cool. Um, what would be really nice is next, or the, excuse me, the turn after, well, actually next turn, because we do have the Amiria's Call, 
uh, to just be able to hit like a shadows verdict and exile like everything. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and scry here. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Not particularly looking for lands. We get to Thassa's Oracle, of course, that's fine. Uh, and we are gonna hit for even here. The, the Thassa's Oracle is the worry. We really just wanna make sure we're not getting uh, sunk by that overall. Uh, let's get a forest. Fantastic. Let's get another Triumph down. Just provides us with basically everything we need. And then here we're going to hit for even. Uh, crucially, we could have waited until Thassa's, or excuse me, actual Thassa was available to hit with that. But I don't particularly want to wait for that time. Um, they're not going to be waiting for that time. So I'm not trying it. <clears throat> Uh, and at this point, those are all exiled, so we really don't have to worry about an extra Thassa's Oracle at this point. That's very, very, very good. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Do gain a little bit of life. I'm going to throw that on the bottom naturally. We just need a good solid removal spell, and we'll be fine. Uh, nice that they get to bounce. This is a really cool Thassa deck. Um, I will very happily say that's a very cool little build um so we do have a couple of options uh we can drop this and fight away the kolga or kogla excuse me uh which i think is probably just the right place so let's just go ahead and do that uh before it gets any kind of counters on it it's a one for one we had to spend a lot of mana but crucially so did they they do get to draw a lot more with the visionary now uh which i don't particularly like uh but it is what it is. We also could have waited. Let me be very clear on saying the the correct play may have been just to throw out the Pelucranos and wait. Um, for the simple fact that then we could instant speed fight it if they did have something. Uh, but I think that, you know, this works out okay. Uh, they've got a cool little engine going. Honestly, a Fracture would not go, uh, go missed in this instance. We would certainly appreciate it. Um, just to deal with some of these... Uh, Mythos is quite good. Um, we can't yet play that. Um, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we can't do both, so let's just do this. I'm gonna go ahead and kill... I don't know what the best answer is, I'll be honest. Uh, I think it's the Great Hinge. The Great Hinge is just really solid. It allows them to draw cards. They're already on a nice little card draw engine, so it kind of sucks either way, but uh, that gains them life and draws them cards, whereas the, the Lanoir Visionary only draws them cards. Um, it does deal damage, but we can deal with that later on. I'm not tremendously worried there. Um, okay. That's a little scarier, uh, no doubt. Um, we do get to fight away some of this stuff if we get Pelucranos down, or if we just drop the Emiria's Call, we're in okay shape, but they, uh, they get to bounce a lot. This is a cool deck. Um, I think it would find itself to be a bit slow overall. That being said, they're doing a very good job of not letting that be the case, so, uh, I can't be terribly upset. Um... So let's see, we've got five cards in the graveyard at the moment, which means we still couldn't play Pelucranos even if we drop some stuff here. So what do we do? What do we do? Um, I think it's just dropping the Emiria's Call. Uh, this just blocks some of their stuff. It's not great. I mean, realistically, we're just going to be trading some stuff off, but then we can drop Mythos next turn and Pelucranos, uh, killing the Ozolith most likely. Ooh, Quandrix is here, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful card. If you didn't see the proxy we made of that or the altar, very, very fun card to uh, to alter. I love this art. It's so beautiful. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, so we do need to kill this, and we probably just need to kill this, but that keeps us dead. So we need to block at least one of these. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we do have to just block here and here. Uh, which means most likely we're dead. Uh, a sweeper would be great, um, but I don't know. We'd really need multiple sweepers, uh, which doesn't solve the problem. 
if that makes sense. Um, and that is not going to do it. Um, so yeah, that's it. I mean, we're just dead. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and concede here guys overall I will say this deck is very well suited to deal with pretty much anything you could throw at it It's got removal upon removal, uh, which is really nice It makes for a really easy matchup no matter what you are against. Uh, I won't say easy I will say a very well suited matchup no matter what however um, In that case you saw we just weren't drawing what we needed uh, the first game you saw we were draw basically just drawing over abundances of removal uh, and Unfortunately, both of those can be an issue. However, we do have the inevitability built in. So I do recommend this list. Maybe play around with it a little bit. Add in a few extra win cons, maybe just one or two. I don't think you need many uh, because, again, you really want to be able to control the game for the majority of the time. But um, there could be some, some interesting stuff you can do with this list. So please let me know what differences you come up with, what changes you might have. A final list would be amazing. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you very soon for another gameplay video.